Milo Yiannopoulos is a very amusing guy, and I definitely think he's doing something good for society by causing a ruckus throughout politically correct colleges everywhere. But sometimes he's absolutely full of shit, and this article is the dumbest thing I've ever seen him state. He writes the following. My view is that if you're obese, you should hate yourself. At least until you get better, because fatness is a health problem, and shame works. Today I'm going to show you the substance behind those claims so that you, dear reader, can go out into the world armed with the facts, and also armed with the knowledge that you can hurl all manners of abuse at fat people with a clean conscience. Really, you'll genuinely be helping them. Firstly, if people feel shit about themselves, they're more likely to change. A landmark study by obesity experts in 2014 found that a desire to improve self-worth was one of the most important motivating factors encouraging people to lose weight. What does this tell us? That encouraging fatties to love themselves, as the fat acceptance movement does, is the worst possible message you could send people if you want them to lose weight. Really? Let's take a look at the conclusion of the study. Peer and parental encouragement and instrumental support were widely endorsed as central to success. That's the complete opposite of bullying. There's nothing in this study saying that people should hate themselves. Obviously, you can feel the desire to change without hating yourself. It's not like other people being assholes is the only reason to lose weight. Being fat isn't comfortable. You can't really move around, you don't have the energy to do shit, and you know for a fact you're at risk for diseases. It even says so in the study. Main motivating factors are intrinsic rather than extrinsic, meaning people want to lose weight because it's personally rewarding, rather than the desire for some external reward. If your motivation is extrinsic, it means that you're doing something to get a reward or avoid punishment from others. Maybe I'm just shit with the English language here, but isn't that the opposite of what Milo is saying? Dude also pulls some weird reasoning about how fat shaming is good both for fat people, non-fat people, and the species as a whole. Apparently researchers found that fatness can trigger feelings of disgust and nausea in healthy people. The reverse also being true. Just being around women raises a man's testosterone, and the same for women who look at attractive men. And though there hasn't been any experiment conducted to prove it, and I quote, Depressed testosterone is associated with many negative health outcomes, and thus the mere presence of fat people is actively harming the population's health. No, you're just a fucking asshole. Fat shaming has nothing to do with being concerned about people's health, and everything to do with I don't find you attractive, and it's somehow your responsibility to make yourself desirable to me. Because you're deluded enough to think that the world revolves around your ego. You even proved this, saying that fat people shouldn't even attend the gym because you shouldn't have to look at them. It's amazing that this guy who preaches personal responsibility to the max can't even take the responsibility of turning his head into a different direction. You're not forced to look at people you think are ugly. If you get hooked up on that and decide to stare, it's your own stupidity. And I actually bothered reading the article you use as a source. This is the first thing that comes up. Researchers found that just being in the presence of a pretty member of the opposite sex causes a temporary boost in levels of testosterone and cortisol, both hormones associated with alertness and well-being. However, hanging around with other men has the opposite effect, reducing the levels of both substances in the body. The findings suggest that men could be better off having a chat with their female friends than going down to the pub with their mates. Uh, Milo, you're a fag. And according to your own logic, you should stop being a fag, because it's bad for your health. Also, men who are married or in long-term relationships have lower testosterone levels than those still playing the field. Meaning that, in addition to hanging out with your bros, monogamy with women is bad for your health too. So nobody should invest in love or soulmates, right? Because that's bad for your health. Let's shame those people. While we're at it, if fat shaming works, then gay shaming and republican shaming should work too, right? A study from UCLA's Dedicated Eating Research Institute concurred, explicitly recommending social pressure on the overweight as a remedy to America's obesity crisis. Sorry, Lindy West, but the experts agree. Fat shaming is good for you. How very interesting. Since the study you linked explicitly says, what I am suggesting is that we should empower the victims, not blame them, and that we should push for individual responsibility. It has its risks, but being overweight is dangerous, so we should at least give it a try. And the section for social pressure suggests approaching the issue from a logic-based perspective of health concern, 
Nowhere does it support your bullshit idea of bullying as a remedy. I see anecdotal evidence in favor of fat shaming all the time. Stories about people being called fat, being bullied, and being inspired to change their lives as a result. Here's a trove of them. So I click that link, and it actually leads to articles that disprove his point. This is the first article. I'd catch Jose looking at me in disgust. As I ate my dinner on the sofa, I'd hear him mutter, fat girl, as crumbs bounced off my belly. It started with little digs, but soon it was cruel jives. I was desperate to be the curvaceous hourglass girl he had fallen for, but I had no willpower or self-esteem to diet. Jose wouldn't show me any affection, and food became even more of a friend. The couple were no longer having sex, and when Lisif asked why, Jose told her she was too fat. She said, the words made my stomach flip and I hit an all-time low. Food became the only thing to give me a moment of happiness. I was eating around 4,000 calories a day. Clearly, her husband being abusive towards her caused her to eat more, not less. And then, when she found out that he was cheating on her, she divorced him clearly not interested in his approval. And then she decided to lose weight for her own sake, because she cares about her health. The second result that allegedly proves his point is this article, about a woman who was called fat by her husband after she lost a shitload of weight because it made him feel insecure. The third article, a woman who says that the more verbally abusive her husband got about her weight, the more she turned to food for comfort. Eventually, she divorced him because he was such an asshole, and got a new boyfriend who supported her instead, which helped her weight loss journey. She says the reason she began comfort eating in the first place is to cope with the stress of being a single mother. The fourth article, thank God, finally an anecdote that tries to prove Milo's point. This girl knew she was leading an unhealthy lifestyle and became even more motivated to change when complete strangers in the street started insulting her. So there, Milo gets a point there. Then again, she also says, I knew my eating was getting out of control, but every time I looked in the mirror, I felt sick. And then I would turn to food to comfort myself, which would only make me feel happy for a short period of time. Once again, food as comfort. It seems like the biggest problem here is that food is being used as a coping mechanism. The issue is a psychological one, and these people need to be given the right tools to break their habit. In Kim's case, it was exercise and a nutrition guide. Bullying people isn't exactly helpful, palatable advice. It's hardly a waterproof method that's guaranteed to work for the majority. And with many people, it might just lead to the opposite. Lead further into the rabbit hole of binge eating, rather than to some Hulk-like recovery. Yet another article seems to prove Milo's point. The summary says that she lost weight after a five-year-old called her fat. That it became the catalyst. But she also says that the bullying she experienced from others prior to this made her feel worthless and being unable to lose weight at first got her to start cutting herself. Her mom took her to a counselor and in her transformation video she says that she's eternally grateful that her family supported her and loved her unconditionally no matter what she looked like because that's what ultimately helped her complete the journey to lose weight. She does say that she was determined to prove people wrong, so in a sense her bullies were a motivation. But she also tells people to never do anything for anyone but yourself. And her message, ultimately, is to inspire people and help them change through support. Not to bully people and put them down. Just look at what she has to say about bullying on her YouTube channel. I think it's terrible. It shouldn't happen. There should be things that are done to completely wipe out bullying. For me, I got bullied all the time and I definitely didn't lose weight for them. I lost weight for myself because I felt that I would feel a lot more confident in my life if I looked better, felt better. Have you noticed a pattern here? All of these women credit actual techniques for their weight loss. None of them say that bullying is a good thing and that people should be doing it. Nobody agrees with Michael. Oh, here's one more article. A cruel former partner called her fat and ugly. Eventually they divorced and she lost weight. She found a new guy who treated her nicely and after a while she started gaining weight again since she stopped going to the gym. Which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. I mean, I hear stories about people buying gym cards they end up never using all the time. But when her husband proposed to her, she became motivated to lose that weight again. Because she wanted to look the best on her wedding day. And eight months after the wedding, 
morning, she has managed to maintain that weight loss and feels much healthier. She credits this partly to a new diet that she discovered. So I'm not sure that really says anything about Milo's point. Here's the thing, you don't need other people's negative energy and harassment to want to do something positive for yourself. Most people start working out because they want to be healthy, not because they want to exercise demons. So it's ridiculous to take bullies, who are the most desperate, pathetic, sad creatures on the planet, and try to give them credit for making the world a better place. Senselessly shitting on other people just because you can is not a talent. It's not impressive. It's just way too easy to do. It's not constructive criticism. He also makes several comparisons to smoking and obesity, using it to argue that since smoke shaming is okay, fat shaming should be as well. Here's the crucial difference as I see it. Smoke shaming focuses on their behavior, not on smokers as people. Fat shaming attacks people's character and selfhood, not just their behavior. And I say this as a smoker. Even though you might come across the occasional asshole who tries to say that you're a bad person for smoking, it just can't be compared to fat shaming as a phenomenon, because it's not at all systematic in the same way, and it's rarely as abusive. There is social pressure on people to not engage in the behavior of smoking, but let's not conflate the terms. There's a huge difference between informing about health and advocating bullying. Also, smoking is a behavior, it's an addiction. Obesity isn't just a behavior, it can also be the result of all different kinds of reasons. Everything from metabolism to antidepressants, since many medications make people fat. Thus, it's not the same thing as smoking. Milo's entire focus is that obesity has to do with people eating too much. It's simply not that simple, and thus the aspect of shaming isn't as simple as well. Smokers sometimes have to pay up to 50% more than normal for health coverage. Yet fatties, despite being more prone to health problems than smokers, get a pass. The rest of us have to subsidize their poor lifestyle choices. Uh, we're also paying for people's STDs, so a homosexual slut like yourself should be way more understanding of public health services than that. Fucking boo-hoo that you have to pay taxes. Do you mean the unhealthy lifestyle choices that are the result of America's bullshit capitalism? Maybe one reason why there's so many fat people in America is because it forces its citizens to work two jobs just to make rent go around. We don't really have that problem in Sweden, and we don't really have a high fat population as well. I wonder why. You know that poverty and obesity are correlated, right? One reason why people become fat is partly due to the way that society is structured. I mean, let's be honest, American society doesn't really give people an incentive to become thin. Rather, it puts up obstacles. And yet, that very same society shouldn't offer people safety nets for something it helped create? It's fucking amazing that this guy, all day long, all he does is give social justice warriors shit because they angle things, because they withdraw information from the public and print skewed perspectives, when he himself does the exact same shit. The reason I concluded that Milo is wrong is because I actually read his sources. I know everybody loves Milo because he's a funny, charismatic guy who makes you laugh and takes an excellent shit on your enemies. I like the guy too, but people really need to stop being led by their emotions and take a critical look at the people they're following. Don't blindly trust anyone as an authority on something just because they demonstrate confidence in the bullshit they're peddling. And look, obviously the fat acceptance movement goes way too far. But so does the fat shaming movement. Why are people drawn to retarded extremes? You are not healthy at any size. And you shouldn't be bullying people either. Neither of these extremes are sensible, nuanced stances to have on the issue. And in our fight against political correctness, perhaps we should make sure to not become the very thing that we are opposing. Intolerant, narrow-minded people who don't give a shit about the facts because it's just more exciting to belong to a group instead.